of Todd Blackledge. Kansas City is 2-0. For Blackledge today, his toughest test. He takes on the later defense, which a year ago led the AFC in sacks. Speaking of sacks, Mark Gastineau leads the Jet defense today against the Bengals in the Meadowlands. As far as Ken Anderson is concerned, he's always looking for Chris Collinsworth, who leads the NFL with 15 receptions at this early stage. Also today, the Seahawks are at New England. A week ago at the Kingdom, David Craig picked the Chargers apart with both his arm and his legs. Those are the games coming up on NFL 84. Boys for their first trip to the playoffs since 1971. Ahmad Rashad analyzes today's Cincinnati. The Raiders will be at Kansas City. The Raiders have beaten Kansas City three consecutive times, but in his coaching career with the Raiders, Tom Flores is only four and five against the Chiefs. As we mentioned, Cincinnati at the Meadowlands against the Jets. The Bengals are 0 and 2, and the Jets have split their first couple of games. And Seattle, off to a rousing start with home victories against Cleveland and San Diego, goes on the road for the first time this year to New England. And as far as the Patriots are concerned, they're glad to be just about anywhere other than Miami. Kickoffs for these games less than half an hour away, so let's take you now to the sites. An enthusiastic sellout crowd of some 78,000 expected here at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The Raiders and the Chiefs, their rivalry renewed on a silver celebration weekend, 25 years since the formation of the American Football League. And the chief names of the past are here to celebrate the Lenny Dawsons and Buddies and Bells and Burfords, Robinsons and Mays and Holubs, and a man who on this kind of weather loves to be near the action, Merlin Olson. <laughs> You're right, Dick. Almost nice enough weather to put on a helmet and go out there. Perfect football day. 70 degrees. We're going to have a full house of enthusiastic fans, and this is a special rivalry. This is a blood game. It's kind of like the Rams and the 49ers, the Redskins and the Cowboys, the Steelers and the Browns. We can expect emotion and enthusiasm, and I think some exciting football from both these teams today. And Merlin, it's the premier matchup in the National Football League this week, and the only test of two unbeaten teams, the Super Bowl champion Raiders, the upstart Kansas City Chiefs, both 2-0. Well, half at Kansas City. The Chiefs are 8-3 at home in their division. All three losses flukes. Two of those flukes against the Raiders the last two years. Will it happen again? Well, I have to see it to believe it. I'm taking the Chiefs plus 3.5, and, and I'll let the Raiders score on that last-minute interception to win by 10. Bob? will report. Kansas City these days, there's some tempered optimism, I guess it would be fair to say, Bill McAtee. The Chiefs opened with two victories on the road, and now some of their fans might be thinking about their first trip to the playoffs in better than a decade. It is a little too early to start buying playoff tickets in Kansas City, but we should know a lot more about the Chiefs after today is over. They did win their first two games on the road, and they did it essentially without their defensive captain, linebacker Gary Spaney, their two starting offensive tackles, and their starting quarterback, Bill Kenny, who broke his thumb in the final preseason game. When Bill Kinney broke that thumb, the Chiefs were fortunate. Todd Blackledge, the number one draft choice a year ago, stepped in cleanly and led Kansas City to an upset win over Pittsburgh in week one. Week two against Cincinnati, the Bengals fumbled in the closing moments while driving. And like having Todd Blackledge, some said it was lucky the Chiefs recovered that fumble. But good teams traditionally seem able to manufacture luck. Super Bowl four Chiefs and Vikings, Otis Taylor somehow keeps his feet. And the Chiefs, 13-point underdogs, upset powerful Minnesota. But since those days, the Chiefs haven't been very lucky or very good. For starters, rebuilding programs were conservative on offense. And there was tragedy. Joe Delaney, a Pro Bowl running back his rookie year, died heroically, trying to save three children swimming in a pond near his home in Monroe, Louisiana. Dallas assistant John McAvick was hired before last season, and under McAvick, Kenny threw for over 4,000 yards. But McAvick reportedly liked Blackley. For a young player, Todd has a very strong arm, one of the stronger arms that we would see. There's still a lot more to be done in playing quarterback than just having a strong arm, and this is really where his development is being done now. The Chiefs' wide-open offense is based loosely on the system McAvick learned in Dallas. Passes are spread equally among the five core receivers, one of whom on each play will have an option based on how the defense reacts. We're a uh, ball control offense by throwing the ball. 
uh, we control the football with the forward pass. And there's not many teams that do that. There's a few in the league, but that's the way that we control the football. Uh, we have five receivers who uh, are excellent football players, and they go all over the field to catch the ball. And we have five good receivers. Um, I'm wondering if um, they all can be satisfied. But sometimes, for one week, you know, you may not even catch a pass. In two weeks, you may not catch a pass. But eventually, you will catch a pass, but you have to keep working for it. The Chiefs have been an interesting team to watch off the field as well. Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator, well-respected in the pro football community, resigned, reportedly after a heated discussion with McIntyre. The trade of Pro Bowl cornerback Gary Green had also raised eyebrows. Green, a strong personality, was an outspoken critic. And with a young team, McAvick felt Green's presence had become a distraction. I tried very hard, in many cases, to let everyone know beforehand what I stood for and what I thought of work and what I thought of teamwork and what I thought of cooperation and how people got along and how they did their job uh, far in advance of any of the tough decisions that I've had to make. One more tough decision will come in five weeks. With Kenny well again, the coach will have to weigh the talents of both quarterbacks. Their experience is really good because he reads the coverages and he will know instinctively now after five years the little things about it's time to take a chance and there's no sense to take a chance. Todd is still feeling this way just a little bit and from time to time he'll take a chance when he doesn't have to. In some respects, though, it's paid off pretty handsomely in the first two games because he's made several big plays. You're going to have a problem maybe a lot of coaches would like to have. What are you going to do when Kenny comes back? I think the decision will take care of itself, really. I try not to make it until we have to make it, but eventually Bill will be healthy, and I think at that particular time we look at everything. You have to feel a little bit for Bill Kenny. First of all, he had to beat out Steve Fuller. He did that. Fuller was traded to the Rams. Then he had a 4,000-yard season, and now he gets hurt, and it looks like he'll have to come back and beat out Todd Blackledge. Earlier, Ahmad Rashad remarked about the Jets' problems with the Blitz. You tell me that Todd Blackledge has done a good job picking it up and hanging in there the first two weeks. Yes, you know, quarterbacks have this image of not being very tough, and yet you got a guy like Blackledge back there who was recruited out of high school by some colleges as a linebacker, so he can hang in there with the best of them. Interesting point, as we look forward to the Chiefs-Raiders matchup, used to be one of the premier matchups in the old American Football League, the Kansas City franchise, counting their days as the Dallas Texans, recorded more American Football League victories than any other team. This would have been the 25th anniversary season for the old American Football League, and that brings us to Charlie Jones' ongoing series. The first installment of the AFL Remembered comes up next. How good we are. They will use as a measuring stick the world champion Los Angeles Raiders. The Raiders come in with wins over Houston and Green Bay and in fact have allowed only one touchdown in the second half of those two games. While the Raiders, or while the Raiders opponents, the Chiefs, have won on the road at Pittsburgh 37-27 and won last week at Riverfront Cincinnati 27-22. Nick Lowry will kick it off and in the wide of the Los Angeles Raiders to return, Doki Williams. And we expect to see Clee Montgomery as the other deep back. Well, they invented this great game of football with this kind of weather in mind. A warm sun and a crisp bite. Autumn bite in the air. Lowry, at the retee it up, a light breeze. Fans still filing in to Arrowhead Stadium. We expect a crowd of 78,000. Well, it's a silver anniversary weekend, and many of the great names Kansas City history are here, and they want a silver and black feast of the Raiders. We'll find out today how good Kansas City is and whether the Super Bowl champion Raiders can roll on. Lowry gets it underway. Doki Williams. He's out to the 27-28 yard line. Jim Plunkett and the Raiders offense will take the field. Kenny King and the superb, talented, versatile Marcus Allen in the backfield with him. The deep threat, the veteran 13 years, Cliff Branch on one side. And on the other will be Malcolm Barnwell. The offensive line, Bruce Davis, Charlie Hanna, Jim Romano starts at center for Dave Dalby. Dalby with 175 consecutive games. We expect to see him before the day is through. Don Mosbar and Henry Lawrence complete the offensive line. First down at the 28-yard line. Plenty of time to find Christensen who drops the ball. 
and perhaps guilty of running before the ball had arrived. Defensively for the Chiefs, they're young and they have three number one picks in that front wall. Still Moss and Bell. The linebackers, Charles Jackson, John Zamberlin, Spaney, the veteran tackler, who's been injured, and Calvin Daniels. Deep backs are Lewis and Ross at the corners. Burris and Cherry. Cherry had seven interceptions last year to lead the club. Second and ten, a mix-up, and still has Plunkett for a loss. We talked about hungry eyes looking at the quarterbacks. The quarters, five quarterback sacks each of the first two games, a total of 10, now they have 11. A chance for you to watch it. A little bit of a mix up here in a sense that it looked like it was a pass play indeed, but Plunkett appeared to be confused on the play. I don't know what happened. Maybe he expected it back in there. Still said, that's fine with me. I'll record this. That's a baggy. That's not really a sack. A baggy indeed. Third and 14 at the 24. Plunkett and a crowd hits Barnwell, and I believe he has a first down at the 39-yard line. The tackle made by Kerry Parker from Grambling. He was an all-pro in the Canadian Football League. Like a bell at the other end, that really puts a lot of pressure. And that's, that's a quality front line. Bill Moss has made an instant impact up front. And it's interesting, Dick, because with Moss in there, he's playing against two inexperienced players in that greater line. Second and 15, and a flag for the Chiefs. Now watch Moss, number 63, at 265 pounds, out of Pittsburgh. Second down, and 25. Plunkett in trouble, and down he goes, Mike Bell. on that play, but he was critical to making that play possible. By creating pressure in the middle, he forced the double team situation. In fact, there were three, two guards in the center. Watch it here. Moss driving off. Look, he'll get bumped by Hannah here. Most far looking inside too. That means that both ends are one-on-one. -on -one. They're man-to-man -man in the pass rush. And they're tough to handle one-on-one. -on -one. Third and 32 at the 16. Allen gets a yard or two and that's all and the Kansas City Chiefs defense has this crowd fired up. We go back inside to look at Moss who does not do very well on that play as Hannah drives him out but you see the enthusiasm of that defense and it's that kind of game enthusiastic exciting these players are going to they're going to have that adrenaline pumping today Dick two top punters in the NFL in the first couple of weeks are featured here today Raymond Guy kicking now to J.T. Smith who has turned four back for touchdowns in his career and Jim Arnold off to a great start the punter for Kansas City Smith is back at his 40 Takes a Kansas City bounce and will be down at the 42-yard line by James Davis. No score. The Kansas City Chiefs will have the ball at the 42 when we return. Ma Bell in Cherry Street in Wichita, <laughs> Kansas. She's followed her son Mike 
and the twin brother Mark, their college and professional careers. And here's the offense for Kansas City, young Todd Blackledge in his second year, number one pick out of Penn State, the quarterback. He has with him in the backfield, Theotis Brown, number 27, and Billy Jackson, 43. Wide receivers, Carlos Carson, 88, Henry Marshall, 89, Willie Scott is the tight end, 81, Kirkenoff, Buddy, Rush, Condon, and Rourke, the offensive line. First down at the 42, no score. First possession, Kansas City. Theotis Brown for about three to the 45. Reggie Kinlaw, 62, down at the bottom of the pile. And with him, these defensive teammates, Long, Kinlow, and Alzado, the front three, but we'll see a lot of four and even five-man fronts for the Raiders. Adams, Millen, Nelson, and Rod Martin. Rod Martin, the pro bowler, all pro last year again. Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes, the great pair of corners for the Raiders. Mike Davis and Dan McElroy at safety. Anthony Hancock is in at wide receiver now for Kansas City. Good protection. Wide open. And Carson. And Carson has a first down at the Raider 32. We're going to see a lot of three and four wide receiver sets in this ball game because the Chiefs have outstanding speed and moves from people like Carlos Carson. Good protection on this play. Chiefs line playing very well in the opening two games, starting here, giving their quarterback time to throw the football. Early scores, the Jets have a 3-0 lead against the Bengals in the first quarter, and Atlanta kicks a field goal against Minnesota. No score here. Chiefs, a first down deep in Raider territory. This is Billy Jackson, and he fights for a couple, gets inside the 30 to the 29, and a flag is down. Linesman on the near side. It appeared that Howie Long, off a little bit early at the left end position, may have been offside. No motion against well, the Chiefs. Okay. Let's let's see if we can see the movement. Long obviously is moving before the play, but apparently was drawn by the action of the offense because it will be marched off against the Kansas City Chiefs. Having that might go out. Maybe somebody ripped it off. <laughs> Maybe so. At the 36-yard line, Jackson, the only back. Whoops, Blackledge almost goes down. J.T. Smith inside the 30, picks up the five yards and a couple more. It'll be second down and seven, J.T. Smith from North Texas State. One of the injuries, and the Chiefs have a number of people who are nursing injuries, was to their, well, their, their co-starter at tight end, Ed Beckman, and that hurts them. They used a lot of two tight end situations in the early going. They're forced today to go to a very inexperienced second tight end, and as a result, we'll probably see more three and four wide receivers. Black lets you see only one interception in his first two games. Second down eight. On a blitz. And they got to Black Ledge enough that his pass was off target, intended for Dave Little, the second tight end, with Beckman Hurt Little from Middle Tennessee, a rookie, in at that spot. Martin was the man blitzing Black Ledge. The Raiders like to put pressure on a quarterback. They feel, and certainly and importantly, in this situation, if you get a feeling for the enthusiasm here, that's the wave we got first up in Seattle. But they use it effectively here. And this, I, I think if things go the way they're hoping, this will be the most enthusiastic and the largest crowd they've had here in almost a decade. Dick. Out of the shotgun for the first time. And apparently somebody in that Chiefs line moving early. Well, Howie's saying one of them moved. He's gone in to talk to the official. And you, you'll notice that the... Uh, no, well, it's long this time. Yeah, this time they're going to call Howie on it. The Raiders will move those defensive linemen around. Long right on the center in this situation. I see what he's looking at. He jumped to the side. Bob Rush actually moved his head on that play. That's why Howie slapped him. He started to move, caused Rush to lift his head a little bit, but the official said, no, that one's yours. You see Long moving inside. That shows his tremendous versatility. Not only a fine pass rusher, pressure man on the outside, he's strong enough to go inside in a pass situation. But with a five yards down to the 24, it's third and two, a different call for Blackledge. 
Nope, still out of the shotgun. As a defensive lineman, one of the first things you want to find out about a young quarterback is what kind of courage he has. On that play, young Todd Blackledge will get a lot of pressure from 77, Lyle Alzado. Look at him coming in. Todd hangs onto that football right till the last second, delivers it on target to the receiver, does everything he can, and then Stephon Page does his job. First and goal, Kansas City at the six-yard line. Page's first catch. He had 30 as a free agent rookie last year. Third among rookie receivers in the league. Blackledge to Theotis Brown, incomplete. He was covered by 51 Bob Nelson. A touchdown if he could have grasped the football. This Kansas City offense really tries to use the passing game to control the football, and that's an illustration of it right there. In essence, that's a long handoff to Theotis Brown. Theotis is an excellent receiver as well as a, a good runner. Seahawks looking for their third straight win, have a field goal lead against New England. Blackledge is three for five on this drive, second and goal. Otis Brown and a flag is down and it's from one of the deep judges which usually indicates a holding by the tight end the Raiders come out of there saying they have the football but it is a holding call against Kansas four wide receivers in well this is a real spread formation out of the shotgun Blackledge and that was a case where number 82 penalty will be against Hancock, the Kansas City receiver. He was forced into a situation where he was defending so that the pass would not be intercepted. Six defensive backs on the field, and in that situation, Hancock indeed became the defensive back as he tried to keep number 45, James Davis, from intercepting that football. It's right at the end of the play here. Number 45, James Davis, is the receiver in this situation, and you saw Hancock putting his hands on him before the ball arrived. Another angle of it, a little easier to see. And indeed, the officials right on it, ticket him for the penalty. So illegal use of the hand, so that's back-to-back -back penalties against Kansas City. It is now second and goal from the 26-yard line. We talked about Lowry's range. He may get a chance to uh, exhibit it here if they keep going the wrong direction. Henry Marshall is to the left. Carson... And Page to the right, out of the shotgun. This is the Otis Brown, the Rod Martin, and Otis McKinney wrapped him up quickly after a short gain at the 23. It'll be... goes underneath to Henry Marshall. Look at that Marshall drive to the 11-yard line. But that'll bring up fourth and goal, and Lowry will settle for the three-point try. Dick, one of the things that has really impressed me about the early offensive showing of the Kansas City Chiefs is that on 12 of 14 drives inside the 50-yard line, they have gotten points on the board. And the only two times they weren't able to get points on the board were two drives, what two situations where they came into opponent's territory on a third down play and immediately had to punt the ball. Again, he's never missed inside the 30, and this is a 29-yard attempt. Jim Arnold, the punter, is the holder this year for Kansas City. And Lowry's swing continues. Kansas City has the early lead, three to nothing. Arrowhead Stadium, seven minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter.
best so far during this season defensively. Does a little shot put job, and here's that tackle coming up, Dick. You're absolutely right. Excellent shoestring tackle by Mike Davis, and that's a little bit frightening because when you've got a hamstring injury and you get those legs pulled back that way, sometimes that will stretch that ham. Cincinnati leading the Jets 9-6 in the second quarter. That was a first down play for the Chiefs. Under a blitz. Blackledge unloading it. There wasn't anybody in that area, but can't blame him. He was just going to unload as Howie Long and Rod Martin were pressuring him to the ground. Last year, John Makovic, because of Kenny's performance, able to bring young Todd Blackledge along very comfortably and very slowly, allow him to mature at his own pace, giving him a little bit of information at a time. The result is that he has matured very well, and that was a sign of it right there. Not taking the sack, unloading the football, but unloading it into a safe area. Second down and ten. The Otis Brown, and we're having a chance to study behind Bill Kenny. Another thing with, during the week, I know most of you saw it, and it, it's the kind of story you love to report. When Kurt Warner, the teammate of Todd Blackledge at Penn State, went into the hospital for knee surgery up in Seattle, Blackledge on his one day off here in Kansas City flew to Seattle to see his good friend Warner, and he was the first one to say hello to Kurt when he came out of the anesthesia and then hustled back here for his practice the next day. That kind of relationship, that collegiate friend, and Blackledge wanted, uh, wanted to know that he cared. Protection, Brown, well read by the Raider defense, and it was 56, Jeff Barnes, playing in Ted Hendricks' outside linebacker spot, who made the tackle for a one-yard loss. Excellent play, too, by number 36, Mike Davis. He's playing extremely, ex extremely good football. He read that expertly. He read the play and then was able to close inside of the inside of the blockers coming out, keep that play inside so that Barnes was able to make the tackle. Third down and 21, John Makovic, 40-year-old head coach. His Chiefs lead 3-0. And that's what they're trying to become today, 3-0. Protection down the middle, right through the hands of Carlos Carson. He was in a crowd of five white shirts, but the ball was there. I think that Rod Martin had tipped that football deck. It looked like he was able to get his fingers on it and deflect it slightly. You'll see in the replay, Martin doing a good job of coming back, getting a deep drop. He's in the right center of your picture. Let's see if he does get his hand on it right here. Well. Kind of hard to tell. It goes over his... We don't see him. We lost him in the picture. But I believe he's got the ball. Jim Arnold scuffs the punt. And it'll go out of bounds around the 40 of the Raiders. So there's a break for Los Angeles. As Arnold, who has been kicking beautifully, averaging 47 and a half yards a punt, gets only 34 on that one. That's have taken advantage of their opportunities. Only three times of 16 have they not scored once entering enemy territory and they have another golden chance second down inside the 10 of the Raiders. Now that's points on the board. That's field goals or touchdowns and that is most impressive. I think that speaks well not only for the offense in general but in particular for young Todd Blackwood. This drive, four plays and three big penalties. It started way back inside the Kansas City 10. Two minutes left in the half. 10-0 Chiefs. Almost picked off by Mike Davis, intended for Willie Scott. 
Scott went inside and the pass was outside. Carlos Carson still on the turf. Apparently roughed on that particular play or that would be costly. Uh, he wasn't near the pass. He was underneath the throw. He went up in traffic, Dick. There were three uh, defenders with him, and I, I couldn't see what happened. He may have come down strangely on his leg. Matt Millen, well, that's like running into a goalpost if he ran into 55. Let's take a quick peek and see if we can see what happened there. Look at number 55. He is reading pass and drifting back into the secondary. It's Carlos Carson right there. Millen almost separating him from his helmet on that play. Millen didn't know but what Carson was the intended receiver, so he made the hit. Carlos Carson is okay. Carlos, I think, just lost his lost a little air, and understandably so. You know, Todd Blackledge was a teammate briefly of Matt Millen's. He said, when I went into in as a red shirt, he said they sent me down on the kickoff team, and here came Todd leading the wedge, and I thought he was going to stop, so I kind of backed up. He ran right over me, ground me into the dirt. Interesting memories for a young red shirt of a, a very dominant player. A lot of Joe Paterno. Penn Stater is in this game today on both sides, as is the case around the NFL. And Todd Blackledge was running the offense against Matt Millen. The inspiration on that defense. A couple of ex-Nittany Lions. Third down from the nine. Good protection to this side. And it's out of bounds. Stephon Page is at a catch. No catch. Incomplete. The same kind of ruling that we saw earlier on the quick branch catch and fumble. The officials given the opportunity to say, was it a reception and a fumble or no reception? They're pretty... They're pretty liberal on that. Let's take a look at it. The rule says if the receiver comes down with both feet on the ground and control of the football, it's a completion. There's no question. It's a completion. But they also, as I said, have liberalized that to, to try and avoid the fumble. Nick Lowry then will try a 27-yard field goal. That would mean, uh, if successful, would be 13 in a row over the last two years. Raiders blocked one against Lowry last year that cost Kansas City a possible upset. Not this time. 13 in a row for Lowry, who still, in his career of five years, has never missed inside the 30-yard line. Dick, let's take a quick peek at something that irritates, well, I think irritates all of us who love the game of football. While Alcedo absolutely losing his cool here, he's mad because he doesn't get to the quarterback. He went back on a play similar to that and popped Matt Hurton off in the stomach. That's the kind of play that will get you a penalty, a foul, and, well, even a fine for the commissioner. James of the pass. Cannon and Bobby Bell. Boy, they, they look good, don't they? Hey, <laughs> it's almost like they get out of play. They'd like to on a day like this against him. That's, that's uh, Buchanan on the left and Bobby Bell on the right. And well, I tell you, they, you get those two in their time and stick them on the field, they'll have an impact. The only thing that gets them away is a little gray in the whiskers. They both look in terrific shape. Now Jim Plunkett starts from inside his 15. He has a minute 42 left in the half. That's a lot of time for him. Dumps it out to Marcus Allen. Oh, is he hit? who did not play college football, was a basketball starter at the University of San Francisco. Oh, was that a charging foul? McAllister, they're very high on him, was a defensive back for a brief time, both in Kansas City, or not in Kansas City, but in Seattle and San Francisco. They came back a lot of huddle on that one, as you can see, Dick. Rain it down incomplete. Minute 15 and counting. Let's see if they go back and hold. The first round pick of the Chiefs in 1961. Do you know who the first number one pick in 60? They didn't sign him. The Chiefs' first number one pick. It was a dandy choice. I don't remember. Don Meredith was ah. their first pick. And Dandy elected to go to Dallas. It was the Dallas Texans and the Dallas Cowboys then. 
screen to Marcus, 20. They're trying to keep him in bounds, but Allen runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Stops the clock, 1.07 left in the half. I think that E.J. Hollum had one of the great lines that I've heard from a fellow player. He'd had, I think, 11 knee operations, and someone asked him about it. He said, yeah, I look like I've been in a knife fight with a midget. <laughs> <laughs> E.J. he was. Well, all here to be honored, and I, I think it's kind of exciting to, to bring those kind of faces back. That'll, that'll bring up a lot of memories for, uh, for NFLers and uh, AFLers that have played against those fellows who are sitting watching today on television. From the 29, first down, and Plunkett goes deep. He has a man to Williams. And Kevin Ross, oh, he's got some speed. He was beaten by a step, but Ross able to race back and correct his error and knock the ball away. That's the same young man from Temple who took an interception back 71 yards for a touchdown earlier in this quarter. Defensive coaches talk about the ability of a defender to close on the receiver. And what they're talking about is when, when a ball is thrown, making up the distance that you have lost. You see it right there. Look how he closed in on that play. And he went up as a receiver. That young man feels like he owns that football. He certainly continues that way. He's going to make a mark here in the NFL. Got three wide receivers in. Williams to the left. Clee Montgomery. And Branch to the right. Plunkett completes to Allen. What a play by Plunkett. And Allen has a first down at the 46-yard line. Plunkett threw that ball while going to the carpet. Oh, what an effort. 16 yards. Plunkett calling timeout. Got a little upset at Jim Tunney. It was looking downfield. Plunkett had to yell at him a couple of times to get him to stop the... These fans so eager to applaud the calls against the uh, Raiders. Not so pleased with that call against their Chiefs. And that's why you like to play at home. Let's see. McAllister... Watch the contact on Christensen. Is he there too soon? Tough to tell from there, but the officials ruled that was the case and a first down at the 35-yard line. Raiders very close to being within range of a field goal, but the clock ticking away with 20 seconds to go. 22 seconds exactly. making the tackle inadvertently got a piece of the face mask and that's a break for Los Angeles stops the clock with 14 seconds left Gary Parker originally drafted by the Raiders played three years for the BC Lions and the CFL has come here they're using him as a fifth and sixth defensive back I believe he got his hands up on the face mask on that particular play apparently with only 14 seconds left Plunkett will use one of his timeouts anyway to talk things over with Tom Yard penalty First down at the 15. Plunkett to Christensen. Lloyd Burris on the coverage, but the pass too tall. 11 seconds left. The Chiefs continue to get excellent pressure on Plunkett, and they're, they're able to do it with their defensive line. And that's, as we said earlier, the strength of this Chief defense is up front, although they've exhibited a lot of strength behind that line today. But they were coming in with four defensive linemen putting the heat on. And there are the numbers we asked you to look at earlier. And the big number, the telling number, that three under the interceptions and the zero under touchdowns, Crockett would like to put a one into that zero column today. He's got 11 seconds to do it here in the half. Good protection. And a flag is down intended for Doki Williams. And let's see against whom the penalty will be called with five seconds left. Holding Raiders. And a 30 minutes of frustration for Tom Flores in the son of Kansas City. And in comes the field goal unit for the Raiders. Chris Barr, who is one for two this year, is only successful field goal from 28 yards. And with a 10-yard penalty, this one's going to be a little tougher for him. But will give the Raiders a chance at something to show for the first half's work. Barr... And Pat Lay, Lay I think has a couple today, the leading point scorers among active kickers in the league. This will be from the 33 of 43 yard attempt, so certainly no automatic. Mark 
Wilson, the quarterback, holding. And Barr is right down the middle, and the Raiders salvage the field goal at the end of the first half. Those are important points. They take the zero off the board and will deflate the Kansas City emotion just slightly. The big play, the 71-yard touchdown by Kevin Ross with the interception at the half. Kansas City 13, Los Angeles 3, NFL 84 after these messages. Wait, Frazier's trotting off like he thinks it's against the Packers. The Raiders on the board, but it has been the Chiefs secondary vexing Jim Plunkett. Here is some first quarter action as Plunkett throws, and Deron Cherry is there to intercept the poorly thrown ball and halt the Raider rally. A little bit later as we move on to the second quarter, it's the Raiders moving again and looking for six as Plunkett throws into the end zone. But again, wrong colored jersey, and again, Deron Cherry to stop the drive. Now again in the second quarter, Plunkett will throw, and this time Kevin Ross, the man who replaced Gary Green in the start lineup for the Chiefs, intercepts it, and he's got clear sailing, 71 yards for the touchdown. Lowry had a couple of field goals, made it 13-0, and then, as I mentioned, the bar field goal made it 13-3, and that is where they stand at halftime. The Chiefs looking to go 3-0 on the year. At